what's really integral in that process as opposed to physically sending in an artwork is making sure that you're able to communicate all the things that you want to through the application, so using the application form to the absolute um, best of your ability, not leaving any blank spaces, never making assumptions that the person who's viewing it knows exactly what it is, how you've made it, why you've made it, or some of the ideas and the inspirations behind it. So whether it's through the artist's statement or whether you're able to provide supplementary material, whether, uh, sorry, information about the work, even if it's as simple as, say, dimensions, which aren't always conveyed through an image, if it's meant to be at a particular resolution or there's something really specific that's integral to that work, it's so important to put it into the application form because I've seen many forms which just haven't included them. And unless I happen to know already about that artwork I just wouldn't know and so much is lost. On my end it would be I think a, a frustration sometimes when I was judging this past edition that with one image you feel a little constrained so it certainly helped having more. Um, obviously in a non-prize offline context you have the breadth of the artist's body of work, past work, current work, you really get a really deep understanding and that's incredibly helpful. One image makes makes it really hard, so I sort of would encourage you to to include more than one, just to help us really visualize what what you're all about. Um, so, in that sense, really try to contextualize what you do. In normal, um, in sort of gallery context, you get to meet the artist, so you get a really direct connection. You get a real flavor of what they're all about. So that's something that you then have to translate to your artist statement. That is your moment to really shine, get your personality across, distinguish yourself. So really use words to, to try to communicate everything that you care to communicate. Um, and then again, one of the sort of frustrating parts is not being able to see the artwork in the flesh. Um, I think uh, there's a lot, I really believe in the importance of creating an object, um, whether it's the, the paper that you print on, the, the frame that you use, how you present your work is 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 so much of, of what you're doing, and you shouldn't you shouldn't discount that. Um, so trying to um, you know understand that during the judging process can be quite difficult, but that's why the shortlist sort of section then helps you really see what the artworks look like um, in the flesh to then be able to choose winners from there. So that's that's really helpful. Yeah, yeah. probably a good a good way of thinking about it is when you see an artwork and it's, it's on a a beautiful white wall and there's a spotlight on it. Uh, it's framed. So often you won't see this, but especially with photography, you won't see this. You see a JPEG of that image. Mm. It's on your screen. It's, it's surrounded by uh, 10,000 unopened emails and things like that. Um, mm. There's a whole different experience and how you balance that is quite tricky. Maybe another good example is if your paintings, if your paintings very impassive, they're thick, it's the three dimensionality of the paint itself. You want, it's, sometimes you won't see it, but a good way of fixing that is lighting it from a certain angle, taking a super high resolution picture of it. And then when, when we see it on our screen, then we get a much better idea, of, a much closer idea of what the painting should look like. Uh, it's still not always easy. It's still not, it's still quite tough. Uh, but there's things you can sort of try and bridge that gap between offline and a, and a JPEG image. Uh, maybe, do you have any? Yeah, I was, I was going to say that you, so I've been entering things for the last seven or eight years now, and you get used to rejection is one thing I can say is get used to rejection. So I was getting rejected by about two things a week, but I've won a fair few prizes before the BP as well. So you get rejected by a lot, but every now and then you get something that makes it all worthwhile. So if you earn any money whatsoever, put it back into entering things. That is one way to get your work out there, get it seen. It's worth doing, even though it can seem very demoralizing at times and like it's sucking up all your money. So definitely do it. The other thing is, put a lot of time and effort into photographing your work. Because for me, I'm a painter, I'm not very good with a camera. But actually learning how to edit photos, they're gonna see, if you're a judge, you see an image surrounded by thousands of other images. You've got to make sure that your image stands out and it works and it actually grabs their attention. And then hopefully after that, they'll spend more time looking into it and seeing the nuances of it. But you have to remember, just be aware of what you're entering. You might really care for your piece of art and your own work and have a personal connection to it. But if you're putting it out there into a competition, you have to be aware of how it's going to be perceived, which means you need to make it actually grab their attention, stand out from the others, and then go into it, which I suppose comes into another question, which is basically just always be aware of the competition that you're entering. So keep in mind 
the kind of competition that you're going in for. There's no point going into an abstract competition with a figurative painting, you know, even if you've got your supposed morals as an artist, always be aware of what type of thing they're looking for in that competition and then put forward works accordingly that you think are worthwhile.